open your hands for a moment. Open your hands for a moment. I want to pray with you right now. I don't know what you're facing. I don't want to know what it looks like. I don't know what the doctors have told you. I don't know if you have a pain in your body that you said nothing to anyone about, but I'm believing that healing is here. I declare right now that even those men that, that have been that have been threatened by death will live again. Somebody get that. You've been threatened by death. You're gonna live again. While you're praying with me, I don't know, I just feel so compelled to share this. I speak over every teenager. And over every young adult, things that have been spoken over your life that do not line up with God have to be released not tomorrow but today. Come on, somebody. Not tomorrow but today. But today. But today. And for all of my adults, I'm coming for you now too. I don't care what's been said over you. I don't care if you're 25. I don't care if you're 85. I don't care if you're 40. I don't care if you're 60. I want you to know there is nothing that has been spoken over your life that can stop what God desires to do in your life. I want you to believe that right now. I'm going to pray over this room over every person watching right now as well, Heavenly Father. And I simply say, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen all over the room. That's so good. That's so good. Before we get into the message for today, um, I want to open this up so we all have an opportunity to be a part of this. That's an opportunity for us to be able to give today. I'm going to have my wife join me on stage here as well. Um, but I want to open this up. I want us all to take a moment um, and just say, God, you've been so faithful to us, and we want to return to you, Heavenly Father, faithfully today. And so I want to give you all and present to you all um, our giving options and all that kind of good stuff. And just, man, we'll have you want to grab it, man, and pick it up, man, something cheerful, something joyful. Uh, but for all you have your cell phones, tablets, um, uh, the, what's the giving number? I don't know by heart. Um, the, our text giving option is 678-203-9949, 678-203-9949. I should have it memorized by now. I've got it saved in my phone. But also all take a moment and just give during this time. Um, know this is that all of our give hope, all of our outreach, all of our week to week essentials are because so many of you are faithful. Right, And so for those who are watching online, there are multiple giving options uh, present and available for you there as well. And so you can use a text giving, you can use the cash app option or online giving. But it's because of the generosity and the consistency, let me say that, of our people that we are able to do things like this and honor people and celebrate people and take care of our community and bless families and all these number of things um, that we were founded on as a church, all right? And so I want to pray with all of you today. Um, God, we thank you right now for being who you are. God, you are faithful. You are consistent. You are love. And God, there's nobody like you in all the earth, God. So every person here who's in the room and watching online, God, thank you for the generosity today. Thank you, God, for for faithful tithers, faithful uh, people who operate in generosity. Without that, God, we would not be able to fulfill the mission that you've called us to do. So God, we thank you, God, we honor you, and God, we worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome. awesome. Can we clap for that today, y'all? Can we clap for that? Can we clap for that? Can we clap for that? So good. Um, is there anybody today like you really, 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 like you want to grow today? Anybody by show of hands, like, like you really want to grow, really want to grow? Uh, God has given me, um, I, I, as I've studied rather, uh, I'll say it this way, as I've studied, God has given me 
um, a very, very, very clear message for us today. Such clarity. Um, I'm so thankful for it. I really am. I really am. Um, can, you, can, you do me a favor? can you turn him up a little bit so I can hear him a little bit better? You're playing so well over there, sir. I don't need to be able to hear that, man. I had to pause for a minute because I just believe somebody came today expecting. And it's not to be entertained. It's not just for some service, but it came to have an encounter with who God is. So I'm just wondering, like, if, you, if you're online, drop hungry in the chat. If you're here right now and you're hungry, just shout the word hungry. Hungry. Ooh. Let's get it. Let's get it. Look, look with me. Uh, we're, going, we're in week four of a series. It's called Secure the Bag. Paige, you ready for this? Secure the Bag, all right? Secure the Bag is week four. Uh, and so I want you to look with me at Joshua chapter six, all right? Joshua chapter six. Uh, as we go deeper uh, into this series today, and William, man, just stay close with me today, man. Just vibe with me, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this together. Uh, while you are doing this and, and, and finding that, um, I want you to know um, that I found out really, really early this morning, probably about 4.45 a.m., 5 a.m., um, that there were a number, uh, somewhere between 15 to 17 uh, missionaries um, that were kidnapped uh, in Haiti early this morning, uh, coming from an orphanage. And so I want to pray for those 15 to 17 people. It was adults and children. And I can only imagine, I can only imagine, like, like you're, you're out and you're serving and then to be taken. Amen. Can you imagine that, Kelly? And so with me, church, I want us to pray for these families today. God, we pray, God, for your people right now. Out serving and doing what you've called them to do, Heavenly Father, and to be taken, Heavenly Father, to be kidnapped, Heavenly Father. I pray for their safety and for their protection. The last thing we heard was that, was that these people were praying that those who had kidnapped them, that, those, that they too would repent and give their lives over to Christ. What a prayer. So we pray, God, for their, for their safety, for their protection. God, for their, for their heart to serve you, Heavenly Father. We're praying right now, God, for a good report in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Man, amen. 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 Look with me at um, Joshua chapter 6, Joshua 6 and verse 27. It says, uh, so the Lord was with Joshua. And his fame was in all the land. I need for somebody to know here right now that the Lord is with you. Amen. That's good all by itself. In your marriage, in your singleness, um, wherever you are, he says, I am with you. Check this out. And um, the very next verse, uh, 7 and verse number 1, it says, but the people of Israel, look at this, very, very key. It says, broke faith in regards to the devoted things. This is very interesting. It says in the very next verse, but the people of Israel broke faith. For Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, 
took some of the devoted things. In other words, he stole it. There are some people who love God who steal too. Look at this right here. And the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Look, drop down to verse number 10. It says, so the Lord said to Joshua, look at this, Tanisha, get up. He says, get up. He says, get up. After all these things have happened earlier in the text, God's response to them is get up. Come on, Pat, it's going to be good today. He says, get up. He says, get up. He says, why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned, they have transgressed my, co my, my covenant. Transgress means to go beyond the boundaries, to go beyond the guardrails. They've gone too far. Transgressed my covenant that I commanded them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and lied and put them among their own belongings. In other words, he's saying the people have the things that belong to me. And they've mixed it in their closet with their own things. Like it's theirs. For all the real people. You ever have someone take something from you, then wear your stuff, and then act like what they're wearing? Come on, somebody. Is your. <laughs> this, here we, he's mixed in what belongs to God with him. Verse 12 says, therefore the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. It says, I will, I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Last part of verse 8, 1 and 2. He says, and the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear, do not be dismayed, Take all the fighting men with you and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, his city and his land. Mm. I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, his city and his land. He tells them to get rid of the devoted things so that they can again receive the favor of who he is. I want to give you a, a title today. Please write it down. Make note of it. Y'all ready? The secret is out. The secret is out. God, have your way today. God, we're so thankful. We honor you and we love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 One more time. I'm going to say the secret, the secret. is out. Yeah. Check this out. So, so the children of Israel uh, have just come through the wilderness. It was a time of purging. It was a time of, of testing. It was of the place where their parents had unbelief and their parents had died in the wilderness, right? It was a place of purging, of renewal, and of growth. And the Bible says that he had already given Jericho over to them. He'd already secured victory for the place he was sending them to. He'd already given them victory over Jericho, and he sends them in. Now, here's what's crazy about this part of it is that, is that he tells them Jericho is going to be yours, right? But the plan or the action plan he gives them does not make sense to the normal eye. Check this out. Here's the game plan to go in and take the city. Someone say, take the city. Here's the plan. He tells them, all right, go in, right? Don't go in the city. Go around the city quietly. Walk around the city one time, then go home. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He says there will be a front guard, there will be priests with trumpets, there will be the Ark of the Covenant, and there will be a rear guard. I want all of you to go out, don't go into the city, but walk around the city and then go home. This is crazy. Uh, I, I, I can imagine in my head, if I was one of these warriors, right, right, I'm one of these warriors, I can imagine my wife, my boo, my girl, my thing thing, <laughs> hit me up on FaceTime, and she's like, hey, hey, boo, what's going on? I'm like, hey, I'm good. So, hey, you home from work, work already? Yeah. I was, I was a battle already, and we, I'm, I'm, I'm all back home now. She's like, you got home early, ain't you? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> How was work today? Well, you know, we, we, we uh, went out and walked around the city one time, and uh, we didn't say nothing. And now we'd be uh, back at home. 
she'll be like, what? what? Weren't you going in to take the city? Like, what do you, what, what do you mean? Because the plan of action, sometimes God will give us a plan that makes no sense in our head. You don't understand it. It makes no sense. And we're like, why in the world would God show me something and have me do something that makes absolutely no sense? Here's why. Because he's the one that makes crooked paths straight. He's the one that waters dry places. He's the one that makes dry bones come alive. He's the one that causes people who were dead to live again. He's the one that makes sure, it's right here, he's the one that makes sure when you go through the hardest times of your life, you hear from him and he does something that blows your mind. As I was studying this and I was reading this, I kept thinking about this city as if I was on the outside. But, I, but for a moment, imagine if you was one of those inside of Jericho for a moment. And you hear they're coming up against you. The Bible says their hearts were beginning to melt. They knew their downfall was here. Can I say a big secret right here? Ready for this? The enemy is more afraid of you than you are of him. Listen, this right here. Listen right here. Listen here. The enemy is more afraid of you than you are of him. Why is that? Because he knows if you ever caught wind of the magnitude of the presence and the power of God on your life, it will shift and shake everything. If you ever really found out the magnitude of the gift on the inside of you, it would change everything. If you really caught a glimpse of how much God really loved you as a teenager, as a kid, as a young adult, as an adult, it would change your life forever. Tiffany, if we ever caught a glimpse of how great he is, it would shift. Check this out right here. I love this text because it says that the people broke faith. It does not matter uh, if you are from the Midwest, if you're from the West Coast, if you're from the North, if you're from the South. It does not matter. There's this game that many of us play. If you played it online or in the room, raise your hand. The game is called hide and seek. Raise your hand. Hide and seek. Hard to see, hard to see. I used to love playing this game called hide and seek, but there's, there's some, some certain things about hide and seek that you have to know. Uh, uh, the very first, first, first thing is that, is that somebody always counts. One, two, three, ten. Right? Then there's somebody else who runs away and they hide. Now, some people have always found the best hiding spots. It takes a long time to find them. But it's always this one person. Hopefully it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not you. It wasn't you. Like, if they're counting on the tree right here, they go high by the tree, like right next to where they're counting at, and they're high like this, as if you can't, re- I-, I can still see you. <laughs> there are some people who never find a good hiding spot. Listen, this is how it is with God. No matter how much we try to hide from him, He says, I'm always going to find you. I'm always going to know exactly where you are. So you might as well go ahead and show me what's really going on. Can I help you out real quick? What would happen if a people caught the magnitude of what it would be like to remove spiritual masks from their lives? No more costumes. No more covering up and acting like we have it all together when we really do not. Achan has taken the things that belong to God and he put it with his stuff. Listen, they had tents back in the day. He would open the tent, have some jays sitting right back in the back, put the, the silver in the box and, 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 and put his gold beneath his, his uh, shoes. He would have been hiding all his stuff in the tent, pretending like God never saw it. If you got some really, really good stuff, you hide it way in the back of the closet. Like way in the back. He does not want God to know what he's done. But check this out right here. The Bible says that they go out and they go out to, to fight this small army, and the army is called AI. AI, AI, AI. Joshua sends out spies to Celeste, 
And he says, hey, go out, check it out, see how it's going. The spies come back, and the spies say, you know what, hey, the army is small. Man, send it in 2, 3K, that's it. We got it, no problem. All right, cool. They send the men out, and the Bible says that AI kills 36 of their men. They come back home, and they, and, they, and they retreat. They're wondering, why in the world did we lose this battle? We just took Jericho. This right here is a small thing. Why do we not win? Can I make an announcement to you all right now? It's not always the big things that throw us off. It's the small things. It's the combos that we did not have. It's, 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 it's the combo that we overlooked. It's the small things that will oftentimes trip us up the most. Have you ever been walking by your bed or table and hit like one of your toes? And you're like, wait a minute, my whole body feel like it shuts down from one, just one. There's something about the little things that gets overlooked that can have a huge impact on our life. Here's what God shared with me. It is the things that we overlook or count as insignificant that truly reveal what's happening on the inside of us. So Kelly, my question here today is this. What in your life has gone unchecked? What is the thing you become a numb to? Ignoring, hoping that it goes away. You had a pain in your body and you said, I'm, I just hope it just goes away. And it goes away for a little while. Then it comes back stronger than ever. Over time, it increases. But Joshua in the text does this. The Bible says he tears his clothes, he falls on his face, and he begins to lament and cry out to God, hear me, why have you brought us out this far in this way? This right here is only for the real people, okay? How many of you have ever asked God this question? God, what's up with this? How did I get here? Do you still hear me? You've been praying and you feel like your prayers aren't even being heard no more? God, where, were, where are you and where were you? I don't understand how I got to the place that I am in right now. What happens when you are taking so many L's, you're wondering, when is the next win? I can't take but so many L's. And God began to show me very, very clearly, it's right here. Hear me here. If our pace is outside of his will, it won't work. Ooh, listen here. Listen. If our pace is outside of his will, it won't work. You can read all through the Bible, Helen, and you will never see Jesus running. Never. He walked everywhere he went. He was never in a rush. He was never in a time crunch. Why is that? He had the pace of the Father. He operated with a different rhythm. Now watch this right here. You ready for this? Y'all help me out. If you don't have rhythm, don't join in. <laughs> Let me get, there you go Paige. Everyone in the room to clap just like this. Yep. Keep going. Watch this. Imagine that's God's rhythm. That's his pace. That's his language. And then we decide, I don't like that. Yo, how about your pace? Let's try this again. Ready? There we go. There we go. Help me out, William. Right there, right? Watch this. What happens if I decided I don't like that pace? I want my own pace that I believe sounds, sounds, isn't it crazy how sometimes we'll be on God's pace like y'all were, 
of what the enemy does and start throwing things at our, come on somebody, he starts throwing things at our life that starts to get in our ear. And even though God has the same pace going every single time in our ear, we hear something different and we're like, wait, wait, wait a minute, I can't hear his pace because something is louder in my ear. God says, if you start operating outside of my pace and hearing my voice and getting still with me and listening for me, the enemy's voice will sound loud when in fact it's actually a whisper. Because the further, follow me camera, before I get, the further I get from him and doing things my way, the more the pace of everything else sounds. Can I help? It's, it's not in my notes, but I feel led to share it. Can I help every person who's married or desire to be married right now in this room or, or, or online? Hear me. The person or the thing that's been tempting you is really a thing trying to get your pace off. That God desires a rhythm for your relationship. And the person that's trying to draw you away is only a 10 to 15 percenter that's trying to throw off your pace. And if you deviate from the place or spot, I don't know why I'm saying this right now, God has you in right now. You will leave the 85 or 90 percent to go after a 10 or 15 percenter. And then wonder, why is my life worse now than it was then? But God wants you to know, you may not be able to control everyone else's pace, but it's your job to get on my pace. It's your job to catch my rhythm. It's your job to get along with me. It's your job to seek me, to make sure I get to you what I need for you to receive. Please hear me right here. We are in trouble when we don't even notice that God has lifted his hand from our situation. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of a church that's not about entertainment and mere programs, but it understands the power and the presence of God. Yes. It's not about just feeling good and sounding good and looking good, but it's about the power and the presence of God. What happens if a church did not even know the hand of God had been lifted from it? His bride? The one he died for, because last time I checked, he did not die for a church service. He did not die like for an event. He died so his bride would flourish and his bride would actually grow. He actually wants us to get better, which makes sense, Kelly, why God would tell uh, Joshua, get up. You cannot afford to just lay in the place you are in, wondering what's off. The reason why it's off, he tells Joshua, is because somebody in the camp has taken the, uh, the, the devoted things and put it amongst their own stuff. I can imagine Joshua um, I'm having a combo with God, and he's tearing his clothes. He's wondering, God, what's up, God? Where are you? I can't hear you. And God tells him very, very clearly, hear me here. Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned, transgressed my, com my commandment. Hear me. Joshua thought the issue was God. He says, hey, we're here. Where are you? But God starts showing him the issue, in fact. It's not me. The issue is someone in the camp has deviated from who I am. What happens when we started blaming God for the very thing that's really happening on the inside of us? Can I tell you a dangerous prayer to pray? I tell you, it's dangerous. You ready for this? Pray with me right here. Here it is. God, show me me. Well, 
What happens if we pray that prayer? Hear me. Not show me my hater or those who don't like me or those who can't stand me. No, 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 no. God, show me. Me. I heard this the other day. Um, this, um, this, uh, this lady, she comes up to her pastor, and she says, Pastor, I don't understand why you let everybody come in this church. They be dressed all kind of ways. They be having hats on. They smell all kind of ways. You, you know what kind of job they really got what to do on Saturday. Like, Pastor, you're kind of losing it. <laughs> he turns to her, and he hands her a cup, and the cup is full of water. And he says to her, hey, walk around the entire church. She's like, okay, I got it. She takes the cup, and she walks around the entire church and comes back to him. And he says to her, tell me, how'd it go? She's like, it went well. She she says, tell me, what were you thinking about while you were walking around the church? She said, I was looking at the glass to make sure no water fell. He said, that's how I want you to operate in this church. Not to be so confused with what everyone else is doing, but to focus on the cup that I've given you. What would happen if you just focus on your assignment? Come on, somebody. What happens if you locked in solely on your assignment and not get caught up in the pace of everybody else? The reason why some of us are not seeing victory, I'm about to comfort you for like 2.2 seconds right here, is because we have things in our camp and now we can't stand before our enemies. It's not that the enemy is so strong. There's something in the camp that's throwing us off. It's not the enemy. He don't got power like that. Come on. We're giving him too much credit. His flesh not like that. God says, no, there's simply something in the camp. Listen, Achan, 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 Achan saw the opportunity to secure the bag. Aiken Aiken said he saw a jacket. Ooh, fresh. Ooh. He saw 200 shekels of silver. Ooh. He saw a gold bar that weighed 50 pounds tiff. In other words, for the average person, what he what he what he stole or took would last them a lifetime. He sees an opportunity to secure the bag. And the Bible uses this word. He begins to covet what he saw. Look at this word, the word covet. The covet means to be, to have have a, a lustful draw away from God. It means anything that entices us and it draws at our heart. It means anything that's tied to our wants that corrupts our internal nature. It means it makes us want to go after things that distract, disappoint, and destroy. He begins to covet what is not his. Mm. Which is very interesting because While he's coveting, he forgets the covenant that God has made with them. Covenant, agreement, not contract, agreement. He made a covenant with his people to make sure they get everything that he needs. Here's y'all where God absolutely messed me up as I was studying this text today. Um, uh, even, Even deeper earlier in the week. Hear me here. When Jesus comes on the scene. He fulfills the old covenant. He fulfills it, he fulfills it, he fulfills it. Then he establishes a new covenant, a new way of doing things. He sheds his blood, hear me, to secure us in our faith by sealing us with the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute, hear me, hear me. The best part of all of this is that when God, hear me, sends his son Jesus, he seals us with his spirit. Not with our own spirit, but with his spirit. Hear me. You don't have to worry about securing the bag when you understand you've already been secured and sealed by the spirit of God. That That was a cute clap right there, y'all. That was a cute clap right there. 
Do you know, Kelly, what would happen if we fully got an understanding of who it is that lives on the inside of us? If you ever understood the magnitude, the one that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living on the inside of you. Tell me how mental anxiety can take you out. Tell me how depression can take you out. Tell me how old pressure can take you out. When the Spirit of God is living on the inside of you, hear me here, and right now, he is shaking up your life. Oh, he's shaking, and he's turning, and he's detaching, and he's uprooting. Why is that? Because every single thing in your life that's not like him is still subject to his spirit. Did y'all hear the words? Everything in your life that's trying to come up against you is still subject to his spirit. This means I'm never by myself. I'm never alone. He's always rocking with me. Yeah, I kept hearing this over the past four days. Tell my people simply this. Follow me. 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 Follow my instructions. Follow me. I'm speaking. Are they listening? Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. But God, how do we make it right when there are some things on the inside of us that are off? And here's what God gave me. Three key things. The very first thing is this right here. Write it down. He says, confess. The enemy will like nothing more than to keep you silent. Than to keep you from speaking or saying anything. When they call out Achan, the very first thing he has to do is confess what he's done. Say it out of, out of his mouth. Talk to get it out. Have you ever noticed when you have felt a lot of guilt or shame on your life, it feels like, I don't want to say anything. Confession opens the door. Secondly is this, refocus. First is confess. Secondly is refocus. Refocus. It's crazy how the more you try to focus, the more the enemy tries to distract you. That's his job, right? The more you try to focus, the more he attacks. The more you try to put your mind on what matters most, the more he comes up against you. Here's the last one. Here's get up and move on. Okay, here's right here. Hear me. It's confess, it's refocus, and then get up and move on. Hear me here. You cannot wait on the opinions of everyone before you bust a move. Listen here. You cannot wait for the majority to agree. It's too late by then. When God is telling you to make a move, you do not need the confirmation of every single person in your phone, on your timeline, on your IG, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. You do not need everyone to have agreement. God is saying, make the move because of what I am calling you to do, not not next week, but now. And there's somebody in this room right now who's saying, I would try it, Pastor, but the issue is I've hit rock bottom. I've seen too much. I've gone through too much. Can I drop some fresh revelation, revelation on you right now? For every person in the room that feels like you have hit rock bottom, bottom. The last time I checked, Jesus Christ was also called the rock. So if you have hit the rock, oh come on somebody, you have hit the place that's the best spot to be able to bounce back from. Someone please say, I hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. I don't mind hitting rock bottom. When I hit rock bottom, it's the perfect spot to be able to bounce back from God will give you strategy as you bounce back. God will give you strategy as you bounce back. God told Joshua to tell uh, the people in this area, he said, hey, hey, draw them out of the city. Put some men in the front. Draw them out and then ambush them from the other side. Y'all, here's what God messed me up right here. Wait a minute. Hear me again. He says, go in and attack the city. When you get close and they come after you, run. 
Hey, man, God, you, you actually want me to run? Yeah, 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 yeah. Draw them out. As they flee from the city, have your other men on the backside. When they leave the city, have your other men sneak in. Hear me here. In other words, as you draw them out, you'll be covered on this side and on that side. Wait a minute right here. Can I tell you that God has surrounded the very thing that's been surrounding you? How are y'all still sitting down looking at me right now? Listen, God is now surrounding the very thing that's been surrounding you. What are you saying, Pastor Alice? Here it is. Drop it like it's hot. Here it is. I want you to apply pressure to what's been pressuring you. What? I want you to apply pressure to what's been pressuring you. If the devil be giving you a headache, the way you worship, I'm about to give him a headache. This is right here. I'm not going to worry about the same thing I worried about last week. Why? I got my enemy surrounded. He can come up against me, but he don't know the kind of God that I serve. I got him surrounded on the left, on the right, on the north, on the south. Everywhere I go, I need him to know, you're not surrounding me. I got you surrounded on every side. You are about to start confusing the very one that causes confusion. Why? I'm not going to respond how I used to respond. Did y'all just hear that? I'm not going to respond how I used to respond. Hear me here. We're going to roll out. Joshua leads them out. Look at this. As he's leading them out, stay close. As, as, as he's leading them out, the Bible says, He takes a javelin and he stretches it out. When he stretches it out, it's a sign to his boys, attack. The word I want to give you today as the secret is out. Here it is, S-T-R-E-T-C-H, stretch. Some of y'all caught that right now. You are being stretched like never before. You don't mind your body being stretched when you are birthing a baby because you understand that I will allow the baby to stretch my body for the benefit of the baby. When there's something greater coming out of me, you won't mind being stretched because you will understand what I'm consuming is not just for me. It's for me and everything that's connected to me. Where are the people who are simply willing to stretch? Hear me. And here's what God gave me right here. He says, he says do not be afraid to stretch. He says, because as you get stretched, it will expose where you're vulnerable. But here is where AJ, I feel where you're vulnerable. I'm feeling the empty areas, Helen. I'm feeling the empty spots. And you would simply stretch. It'll be a sign to everybody rocking with you. We're not going to retreat. We're going to go forward. Hear me, Pastor Alice, but show me that in the Bible. Don't you worry, I got you. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he did not die like this. He died like this. Huh? Wait a minute, hold up, wait a, wait a minute. If he would have went to the cross like this, they would not have been able to pierce him in the side. So he goes to the cross, not like this, but like this. In other words, you can have all of me. You can get all of this. I'm going to the cross and I'm about to stretch. Jesus. I'm about to stretch. Because there will be some people in 2021 who will need to benefit from my stretch.
Let me help you out physically. So every time going forward, you look down at your body and you see a stretch mark. I mean a beauty mark. Hear me, it's a sign that God touched me here. God touched me here. That God entrusted me enough to stretch me. This is the spot that he had his hand on me. And he pulled me. It didn't feel good. And it hurts. But what you're holding is the evidence of what God has given you now. No stretch marks, no baby. You got to make a decision. Are you going to birth what God told you to birth, Isaiah? Or are you going to be stuck on how you look in your flesh? Because God don't care how your flesh looks. He care how your spirit looks. He don't mind giving you a few stretch marks. And this is a sign that I touch you right here. Someone simply shout stretch. Look at this. The Bible says to me, it absolutely messed me up. That Joshua, he starts moving out. He's leading the people. He's fighting with this sword. They're going into battle. But sure, the text says this. While he's fighting, Suddenly, uh-oh, 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 there, there, there it is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He moves out suddenly. Hold on, hold on. When God has given you something, it's no time to delay. There's a suddenly, I'm telling you, oh God, in the house right now, I can hear it. There's a suddenly. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but you're asking too many questions. What if this goes wrong? What if that happens? I wonder if this happens. God, Jesus, help me out right here. You're asking too many questions. God said, suddenly. But God, I, th I thought I heard you and did what you said. He says, go back. I said, suddenly. Jesus. I'm drawing you in suddenly. Hear me. And as Joshua moves out, y all, y all, as Joshua moves out and he's fighting, the Bible says, from heaven, God starts throwing down hailstones. What? In other words, I'm out here fighting my enemies. And my God is throwing hailstones at my enemy. In other words, he letting you know you're not fighting. Come on, Tiffany. You thought you was going at it on your own. But as you are fighting, all of a sudden, something from above. Oh, come on, somebody. Starts throwing stones at your enemy. This is a sign to you today. As you stretch out and you suddenly, God will start throwing stones. Wait a minute. What did he just say? As you stretch out and you suddenly, God will start throwing stones. The Bible says the stones kill more than the swords. He's fighting for you. And my pa I would have been good right there. I would have been content. I could have closed the Bible, walked away, and kept going. But I saw something to me. He's out fighting his enemies. And 
And while he's fighting, he starts praying. And he prays these words. Son, stand still. Help me out. Put you something. Give me a little more bottom. I need, I need some, 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 some war, some battle, some. Hear, hear me, hear me. He says, son, stand still. Wait a minute. This man has the audacity to pray that the S-U-N would be still. Where are the people in the room that have the boldness and the audacity to pray some things right now that make absolutely no sense? Where are the people in the room right now that have the audacity to pray some stuff that nobody would believe? He looks up at the sun and says, son, stand still. In other words, I'm not going to allow my enemies to rest tonight. All of them got to go. So God, if you will hold the sun right where it is, we can finish doing what we came to do. Sun, stand still. Sun, stand still. Still, son, whew, stand still. And it was crazy. When he says the sun to stand still, God makes the moon stop too. You got so much favor on your life that God will hold up the sun to make sure his child gets what they need. And oh, he's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. Come here, Isaiah. Hurry. Come here, Isaiah. He's fighting for you. Come here, Isaiah. He's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. Come here. Somebody here, Isaiah. He says, son, stand still. This is crazy to me. Stand right here real quick. This is crazy to me. Can y'all see him right here? Joshua prayed that the S-U-N would be still. And God caused the S-U-N to stop. Was good. I don't need to read nothing else. But then God showed me this right here, and, I'm, and, we're, and we're done. He said, that wasn't the only time that I made the sun stop. I said, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The text says that he never did this same thing again. He says, Alex, you read it, but you got to read deeper. I said, show me, God. He took me to Mark 10. Woo! There was a man by the name of blind Bartimaeus. He couldn't see. He was begging on the side of the road. He was sitting and he was begging. And the Bible says that he hears that Jesus is passing by. And he starts screaming. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. While he's saying this, all his friends are like, shh, be quiet, you're too loud. No, 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 no. The issue is y'all can see. In other words, y'all got something that I had that I don't have. Y'all got something I need. I don't want to hear your shush because he's here. The more they try to hush him, the louder blind Bartimaeus gets. And the Bible says this. He starts crying out so much. It says, and Jesus stood still. Right. 
So not only does he make the S-U-N stand still, he made the S-O-N. He hears the cry of his children. Can I tell you, your prayer tonight, your prayer right now, God is saying, I'm looking for some people with the kind of faith to make me stop and say, wait a minute, wait a, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are the people right now who are like, God, the one you're looking for, it's me. I didn't drive two hours to come up in the spot to not get what I need from the Lord. I didn't drive 10 minutes to come up in the spot and not get what I need from God. I can let you know right now that God is looking for the people that make him say, hold up heaven, shush. My child is talking. My child needs me. My child is calling me. He's carrying the cross. He's moving to mission as he carries the cross. But then he comes to a stopping point. The S-O-N stops again. But this time, he does not just stop. He stretches. And it would have been enough if he just stretched. But then he gives up his spirit. It would have been enough if he gave up his spirit. But then he allowed the stone to be rolled in front of him. It would have been enough if he let the stone stay there. But the Spirit of God said the same thing to him that he said to Joshua, get up, get up, get up. In Georgia, get up. In Florida, get up. In the North, get up. To your child who's laying at home sick in the bed right now, get up. To your child who's behind bars right now, get up. You thought it was over? You thought you had me sealed in? Get up, 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 get up. I may die somewhere at some time, but I'm not gonna die in this spot. Can these dry bones live? You better believe it. Get up. Squeeze his hand. Get up. 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 Everything there on the inside of you is now waking up. Oh, Jesus. Jesus.
get up. Before I pray with all of us today and we get up out of here, if you're here right now watching online, you've never said yes to Christ, which means that, 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 that if, you, if you were to die today, your eternal home would not be heaven. I, mean, I want to pray for you right now. I want to believe with you right now. If you've never said yes to Christ, you've never said yes to Christ, or, or you've said yes, but today is your day of recommitment. That God, I'm turning back to you today. If that's you, you're watching online, you're in a room right now. If you're in a room right now and that's you, I want you to lift your hand really high. If that's you, you're in the room right now, lift your hand really high. I'm committing, I'm recommitting, uh, or I, man, I need a church home to be able to connect with. If that's you, raise your hand high. If you're watching online, uh, you can simply respond to the number on the screen right now so that we can reach out to you and connect with you. But if that's you, I'm committing, I'm recommitting. I mean, I really want a home that I can build with. If that's you, raise your hand really high in the room, online, respond right there. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you. We're going to take a moment right here. If that's you, respond right here. Respond right here. I hear God saying, don't rush me. Don't rush me. If that's you, respond right here. I'm committing. I'm recommitting. I, mean, I just need a church body to be able to connect with. If that's you, respond right there. Lift your hand really high in the chat. If that's you, respond there. Thank you, Father. God, I pray over every person gathered right now online or in this room for decisions being made as we go closer to who you are. God, we believe. God, we trust you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.